In this video, we are going to be solving the KCSE 2021 past question. Now, um, question one says an empty tank of capacity 18480 liters is to be filled with water using a cylindrical pipe of diameter 0.028 meters. The rate of flow of water from the pipe is 2 meters per second. Find the time in hours it will take to fill up the tank. Now, um, in order to solve this question, the first thing you need to know is um, your volume, the volume per second it's given at pi r squared multiplied by the rate. So once you can establish this, you can solve this question. Then, uh, so uh, volume per second, it's going to be now pi, it's 22 over 7 and uh, uh, radius. Now, you need to know that your radius, um, your diameter is 0.028 meters. Therefore, your radius is diameter over 2 and that will give you 0.028 divided by 2. So, your radius is going to give you 0 0.0. 0.014 meters so that means i'll put my 0.014 square so um times my rate is going to be um my rate it's um two so that means 22 times 0.014 all square multiplied by two all divided by seven Okay, so when you punch this on your calculator, um, you are going to get um, that 0 0.001232. Now, your unit is going to be what? That's meter cube. Now, you need to find it in liters. So, um, for you to get it in liters, you're going to do 0 0.001232 multiplied by 1000, and that will give you. 1.232 liters so having established this now the question says we should find the time in hours it will take to um, fill up the tank so to get our time our time is now going to be um, 18480 divided by 1.232 so when you divide it Okay, so it's going to give you um, 15,000 seconds. So this is our time. Now to find our time in R, we need to convert 15,000 seconds to hours. So this would be um, convert 15,000 seconds to R. So all you need to do is do 15,000 divided by 60 times 60 where this 60 is converting it to minutes and this 60 is converting it to hours so this will be 15,000 all over 36 so double zero cancel double zero how many 36 are in 150 we're going to have um four um that's uh, the remainder that will be um four over this will be six over 36 so which is the same thing as four whole number six here is one six is two thirty six will give us um, six so that's four whole number one over six hours so as easy as that you can solve this particular question now if this is your first time of coming to this channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button now the question two says the first time of a gp it's two the common ratio of the gp is also two the product of the last two terms of the GP is 512. Determine the number of terms in the GP. Now, get to know that this question is 3 marks. Now, the first term is what? 2. Now, it says um, the common ratio is also what? 2. Now, um, you need to know that uh, since this is the first term, Okay, this is our first term, it's A, our second term is always AR, our third term is AR, that will be 2, our fourth term will be what, AR3, and going to the nth term will be what, ARN minus 1. So, having known this, now it says, the product of the last two terms of the GP is 512. So, let's say for our last term, our last term or probably we can call it our nth term, it's going to be what? That's 
a r n minus one now the term before the last term the second to the last will be a r n minus two so you can see there's always a decrease going up from the fourth to the third there's a decrease in one so you should know that this is n minus one minus one so which will give us n minus two now it says the product of the last two terms of the gp is five one two so we are going to multiply the um, second term and the last term so second to the last second to last multiplied by last so this is going to be um a r n minus one times a r n minus two and they said it gave us what five one two now remember your a it's two and your r is two so we're going to punch in our values so this means um two times two n minus one times this would be two times two n minus two is equals to five one two okay so this is going to be two times two will give us what four and we'll have uh, times two n minus one now using your indices law this can add this so this will be plus n minus two is equal to what five one two so this will be four times two into n plus n will give us what two n minus one minus two is going to give us minus three is equal to five one two so from here we can establish that two will be two n minus three is equal to what that's five one two divided by four so this will be two raised to the power two n minus three is equal to now when you divide five one two by four you are going to get one twenty eight so this is going to be two raised to the power two n minus three now one twenty eight is two raised to the power seven so having established it now we have an initial equation and our base are the same so we can now take our index so this will be two n minus three is equal to seven. So from here, we can collect like terms and say 2n is equal to 3 plus 7. So we have 2n is equal to 10. And therefore, my n is going to be what? 10 over 2. And my n is what? 5. So this is your final answer. And this is the correct way to solve that question. So question 3 says the expression ax squared minus 30x plus 9 is a perfect square where a is a constant find the value of a now get to understand that they said it's what a perfect square now whenever you have an expression ax squared plus bx plus c now for this to be a perfect square all you need to do is this should meet the term the condition b squared is equal to what 4ac so when we compare this with our equation ax squared minus 30x plus 9, our a is still a, comma, our b is minus 30, and our c is what? That's 9. So put, plugging them into this equation above, we are going to have minus 30 all squared is equal to 4 times a times our c is 9. Here we are looking for a so this is going to be our um, minus 30 squared is going to give us a uh, 900 this will be 4 times 9 is 36 times a therefore a will be what 900 divided by 36 now when you do this you are going to get what 25 so 900 divided by 36 is 25 so for this to be a perfect square um, our a should be what this should be 25x squared minus 30x plus 9. So this completes it a perfect square. Now question 4 says make x the subject of the formula where y is equal to bx all over square root of cx x squared minus a. Now for you to make this the subject of the formula, the first thing you need to think about is how to eliminate the square root. Now, we have to do a square both sides. So this is going to be y square is equal to b square x square all over. 
now when you square both sides this square root goes out so you have cx squared minus a from here we're going to cross multiply so this is over one so this is going to be y squared into cx squared minus a is equal to b squared x squared so from here so we're going to expand the bracket which will be y squared cx squared minus y squared a is equal to what b squared x squared so if you recall we're trying to look for x so we are going to make all the x variables in one place so this will be y squared cx squared this coming over will be minus b squared x squared now this going over will become equal to y squared a so we're going to make uh bring x squared out since it's common so this is going to be y squared c minus b squared is equal to what y squared a so um from here we are going to say x squared will be equal to y squared a all divided by y squared c minus b squared therefore from here x is going to be square root of positive minus now this would be y squared a all over y squared c minus b squared final answer so as easy as that you can also solve this question and like i said if this is your first time of coming to this channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also click on the notification bell so that you can get more kcse videos from us